Welcome back to Waterfan TV. The Joy and the Pain podcast is also live. Well, last home game of the season, uh, Bradford at home. What do we know about Bradford? I don't know much, but this guy, Johnny, is the main man. Chickens on the Loose podcast. Um, on with me on Talk Sport uh, Network. So that's really good. Um, how's it going, Johnny? Uh, thanks yourself. Uh, we're good, we're good. Surprised we're still in the race after our recent form. But uh, we're just, just about hanging on in there, trying to snatch that last playoff spot. Um, what's um, What's been the challenge for you this season for Bradford? Everything. <laughs> so Andy, Cook, uh, still, Andy St Cook still done all right for you, only 15 goals. Yeah, top goal scorer Andy Cook, he's doing well. Uh, like the season's coming to end now, so I think players basically, if they know or they don't know if they're getting released or new contracts, so everything's up in the air at the minute. We've had issues on and off the pitch. We've had, uh, I think, uh, Sharp, I think he came from Mansfield slash Wigan, yeah. And he's like now the director of football slash head of football, so hopefully yeah. things will improve next season. Uh, Mark Hughes, were you sort of uh, surprised when he uh, was outed? I, I liked him, a little bit I liked him as manager, but in the final uh, against second leg against Carlisle, yeah. he did a stupid and bizarre substitution and we conceded after the substitution. Yeah. And then I think he just I think he just had a hangover and <laughs> he didn't play really well really. Um, Graham Alexander was an absolute, absolute car crash at MK Duns, and then he's come to you, and he's uh, much, doing much better, isn't he? He didn't start off. He started off okay, and then he went rubbish again. Uh, MK Duns, I know he did bad at MK Duns, but apparently he was our third choice, or probably third on the list. Uh, we we're going for the original uh, uh, rumours. Well, we we're going for the Cowley brothers. Oh yeah. Uh, and then they're buggered off to uh, Chester, Colchester, or Colchester, that Colchester, yeah, Colchester. We we were thinking when Walsall changed the manager last end of last season, the Cowley brothers, yeah, we get that. And people were saying like they're not going to come down to League Two, and then they end up going to Colchester right down the bottom of League Two. So that was a bit of a surprise, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they had an interview. At, rumors are they had an interview at Bradford City. Yeah. And I think it's just like the, the atmosphere at the club is, is shocking at the minute. Uh, I think we're just covering a plaster, really, bringing in Sharp. The CEO's not doing very well. And then there's obviously been uh, the Bradford City fans independent group. They did a protest. I don't know if you saw that on the news. No. Uh, protesting about the ownership and the CEO. Not good, then. Um Callum Kavanagh, he's been a, a bright spark since you arrived from uh, Middlesbrough, wasn't it? Two and a half year deal. Good signing then, I think. Yeah, it's a uh, gent who likes to go to Middlesbrough players. Um, surprised you, it's like with Southampton and Liverpool, I'm surprised you don't get a free player. Get his uh, stamps card. <laughs> but that Cap Kavanagh's doing really well for City. He's scoring goals. His goal against Salford was good. and His celebration were good. <laughs> just hopefully we just need more younger players and people who probably can score more and just get us climbing up the table really from next season. Yeah, um Andy Cook, I thought he was he's getting on a bit now, isn't he? I thought he'd be slowing up a bit. Is he still doing really good then? You still happy with him? It can be okay. I think he's thirty two, Andy Cook, possibly I think he's thirty two. I was in his thirties. And he's been given a I think three year extension. But ever since he's had this, yeah, three year extension. It's either two or three years. He has an extension, and people found him out. And he's not, he's, he's not playing really good recently. He's not scored. He'll score against Warsaw, I'm sure of it. He always does. Won't surprise me if you guys win. To be honest, on Saturday. Well, uh, Andy Cook, as you say, he, um, the home defeat to Mansfield, 16th of March was the last time he scored. And previous to that was February, middle of February. 
Um, age is 33. It's 34 in October. And he's had a three-year extension. Blue me, Nick. Two, two or three. Uh, yeah. But it's like with the club and stuff. Cook's doing okay. He's, he's saved us, to be fair, Cookie. Yeah. But then we've had, like, Vin Vidim Oliver, who's currently on loan at Stevenage. Uh, but with the news of Evans going to Rotherham, it wouldn't surprise me if he follows him. Ah, uh, I've got you. Okay. The um, I think the thing we found out when Andy Cook was at Warsaw, um, he's a natural goal scorer. He knows where the net is and that sort of stuff. But I think he upset everybody that he came into contact with. Um, is that possible that you happening there at Bradford, or do you think he's more calm there now? I just don't think he's getting the service at City, personally. He's under, I think, when we play two up front, because uh, obviously Oliver's at Stevenage, Tyler Smith's come in, he's done well in the, or the EFL trophy, he did well there. Yeah. But I don't think they work well together. And with Cav coming in, I think he's improving him, but we just need to get Andy Cook to, smart, to score more goals early. I guess Kavanagh's, Kavanagh's the energetic one that does all the running round and then uh, Cook sort of gets on the end of them, I guess. Yeah, he has, he has his good games and off, off games. Uh, the um, I've, I've got one of my comments, the abandoned hunter. The Cowleys uh, are Essex-based. That's probably why they turned down Bradford and went to Colchester. Just uh, returning home sort of thing was uh, potentially one of those things. And... Um, You've certainly had an uptick in form, haven't you, recently? Three wins in four. Yeah, yeah we... 2 nil against Tramia. Obviously a bit late for trying to get to top seven, but it's still good to see I'm picking up points. Yeah, because we've got you guys on the Saturday, Barrow then on Tuesday. Third time lucky for that. Yeah. And then we've got Newport last game of the season. Uh, Newport, I think, of uh, on the beach, aren't they? I think they were in the playoff mix, and then they've won. A, they've lost about six on the bounce, haven't they? Newport. I'm just trying to see where they are in the league. Newport. Yeah, they've dropped. They've dropped off it majorly, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, they're they're below as Newport. They're sixteenth. Uh, we're currently on sixty, and you are on sixty-five. Well. If uh, we need a miracle, really, to get into the playoffs if, if it's mathematically uh, possible. I, I don't think I don't think you can make playoffs now. I think ma maximum points you can get is what sixty nine. Um, I don't think that'll be enough. Sixty nine. Um, Walsall on sixty five points at the minute. The most we can get seventy one, and um, I don't think that's going to be enough if we beat you guys and beat Wimbledon on the last day. It's possible we might sneak in, but I think. <clears throat> Likely to not quite do it. You've got quite a an influence there. I think if we if we can beat you on Saturday, <clears throat> and then you beat Barrow, that would uh, be quite nice. And um, you haven't got to play uh, Doncaster. We could do with somebody beating Doncaster as well. <laughs> Doncaster having a right crazy run, aren't they? Yeah. So uh, who've stopped part of Mansfield have gone up. Wrexham have gone up, aren't they? Yeah, Mansfield. Was... Uh, Mansfield are up as well. I hope uh, probably MK Dons go up. And then well, next MK season, up, MK Dons are going to finish four. Um, Barrow got uh, Doncaster, Bradford, yourselves, and, and Mansfield. So that's three tough games they've got. But they've already got 68 points. Um, Crawley, they're on 66 points. And they're away to Sutton at home to Grimsby. So away to Sutton's a tough one because Sutton... Uh, Still got a sniff of uh, survival. Um, Doncaster, um, they've got Barrow, Colchester and Gillingham. And they're currently behind things, but obviously with a game in hand. Um, I think they're all going to get more points than Warsaw can get. That's the uh, the thing. So, um, yeah, Abandon Hunter's saying, Cook scored 32 last season. Um, and we thought teams would have sussed him out more. He's a goal scorer, as we know, and a 15-goal return again this season is still very, very good. Um, so as much as people have found him out, he's still getting in the positions and still scoring. Yeah, it's like when I've been to games and stuff, people, in, when I've been to home games especially, they're saying he's got lazy. 
I don't think he's got lazy. I think he's just not having the assists. He's not been given the chances to score. Well, it, I think found out. I don't think he's ever been a particularly fast player, um, an energetic player. He's just strong, holds the ball up, and then gets in the right positions. Um, there's there's another player I want to talk about, Ash Tyler. <laughs> Because yeah. he played for Warsaw and he was absolutely hopeless. I mean, so, the same. so, so, so slow. And um, and he sort of, they agreed. First of all, they came out and said he got COVID and then he left by mutual consent. And then the day after he played for Kilmarnock and it's like, oh, he's found his level. And then when he rocked, when he, uh, Rowed up at uh, Bradford, it was like, how's he got a, how's he got in their team? I, I don't know. Like, is it's like I've because I've followed Bradford City home and away, and I've been to quite a lot of away games. And when he played Forest Green, I think he were winning. Uh, I think it was two one were winning, and he just he just took the player out, and he obviously got straight red for it. But he's not played. He's not played in ages, and I think he'd be gone in some ways. He's not good enough. He's a liability. I think, uh, I think maybe your your uh, improvement has come in in time with uh, Ash Taylor not playing. Um, we we played one game. It was last season. I think it might have been Forest Green. Actually, it was a JPT game, and um, he hung off the. Uh, they they were in possession. And he hung off about five yards from their player because he was worried about him going past him on the break. And he had five yards start on him. And the guy just went past him as if he was like asleep, really. Um, so, yeah, Ash Taylor. He, I think his girlfriend, he's got a very attractive uh, partner. Maybe she sort of got, in, got the deal, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, he's not been very good for City, to be honest. And I'm glad he's not playing. And personally, I think he'll probably go at the end of the season. And hopefully he goes, him and a few others. I think I think he's had a good career. He's had a good career. But I think when your legs go um, at centre-half, that's you're going to get exposed massively, aren't you? Particularly in League Two, when you've got sort of teams trying to run at you and that sort of thing. Oh. It's like Ossie Deber, he was good for us. How was the uh, Yeah. What do you think? He was good for his first, uh, first game. First, I think it was 10 minutes. He had a blind do really well. And uh, I don't know if you know, but he broke his leg against Doncaster. Oh, that was it, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the player didn't even get sent off for it. But then a couple of minutes later, uh, the manager took him off, uh, took his player off. And now he's at Forest Green Rovers. But also Derby, he was a good player before his injury. And he yeah, was good, think... but then... He just went for to Warsaw, pop. Osadibi for Warsaw, he was one of those players. It's like he's the most skillful player on the pitch, but he just didn't do it enough. He just didn't do it enough. That's a um that's the issue, I guess. Um and then he, he scored against us for Forage Green, which is just typical. A uh, guy shot, hit the post, and went out to him, easy tapping like sort of thing. That was just always gonna happen, isn't it? Yeah, I'm glad Forest Green have gone down. <laughs> well, um, Sutton, Sutton uh, look like they're going to follow them. I think Colchester are going to survive, aren't they? It's close there. It's like looking at league table there. Uh, Sut Sutton on 40, Colchester on 44, Grimsby 46, Salford, uh, Grimsby 46, Salford 47. Yeah. Well, any of, really, anyone could go down from there if they put the right well, ideas up. two games left, isn't he? I mean, he got two games left. Oh yeah, two games. Yeah, so yeah. Colchester, if Col if uh, if Sutton win both the games, um, they could do it. But uh, the two games they have got, uh, they're Crawley at home and MK Dons away. So I can't Crawley are doing well and MK Dons are doing well. A pair of them are doing yeah, well. I can't, I can't see Sutton getting any points out of that. But if they take points off Crawley, then uh, happy days. Um. We did warn them about Ash Taylor, says Rob Holden. Um, Albert Robinson, all the best from everyone who lags in the playoffs. That's uh, from a Donny fan. That's nice. 
Um, your initial reaction to me mentioning Ash Tyler says it all because you laughed. <laughs> he's not a good um, player, to be honest with you. You and your viewers, he's, I don't, is this a PG show or is it? <laughs> well, we're trying to keep it PG, yeah. All right, it's dog poo. <laughs> um, Ash Tyler, for a player that thinks he's far better than what he is, a good career up, to, up in Scotland, though nobody else in the AFL has rated him. Yeah, so he's done right up there. That's been an issue, though, at City as well, Gent, is finding decent players, such as uh, Cav, and we've brought back uh, Wright as well from Plymouth yeah. on loan. I don't know if that were a PR stunt for Wright, but Wright was good for us, and then he, he swanned off to Plymouth. By all accounts, he, he annoyed the uh, Plymouth fans by giving them the fingers and just fell out of all fans, really. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the thing is, it, it is a pressure cooker. It is a pre pressure cooker environment. Um, one of the Warsaw players that's that's been outstanding this season is Isaac Hutchinson. Um, I think he's something like 12, 12 goals, 12 assists, something like that. And... Um, he has been very, very good. But, I mean, he seemed to be off it lately. And um, he's, I think it's his dad or his brother has sort of messaged me, say, like, he's trying his hardest sort of thing. And uh, when when you're one of the better players, you do get targeted and um, man-marking you and that sort of stuff. And that it, it is difficult. It is difficult. So uh, I apologise to him that um, cause I was saying maybe his head was turned because he's been so good. Um, but he says that's not the case. And uh, he's just trying to give it all. It's just not quite working for him at the minute. So, um, you think, you get, you think any Walsall it. players will come to City? Pardon? You think any Walsall players will come to Bradford in the summer? Especially that player you just mentioned there. Well, one player who um, may be on the move is Danny Johnson. And... Um, Danny Johnson is a natural goal scorer and um, he's sort of 31, I think 31, 32 now. He's a natural goal scorer, but he's, for whatever reason, the Warsaw manager has just not played him. He's just not played him. He, he's hardly given him a kick um, for most of the season, but he brought him on last night for 30 minutes to go and he scored the winner. And um, you could tell from the... Uh, his response that uh, he was still not happy. And in the post-match, the manager was sort of, you could see the manager's face. It was like, oh, yeah, I knew he'd really score if I brought him on, <laughs> sort of thing. So I don't know what's going on. from Mansfield? Pardon? No, you got from Mansfield? Yeah, yeah. He, well, he was, on, he was at Mansfield, and uh, we had him on loan last season, scored 15 goals before January. Walsall wanted to buy him. They put a high price tag on it so he couldn't afford him. And then at the end of the season, he came to Walsall. But the manager, Matt Sadler, wants to play a high press. And um, Danny Johnson, similar to Andy Cook, is um, is not the guy that's going to be able to do the running to, um, to maintain that high press. But similar to Andy Cook again, you give him a chance, he'll score. And the amount of chances Warsaw miss, it is frustrating um, that we've got a, a, a natural goal scorer on the bench who's uh, not gained enough minutes. For me, bringing him on last 30 minutes when uh, maybe the other team's tiring a little and um, giving him 30 minutes at the end of each game would be perfect for me, I think. And he'd, he'd love it, come on scoring the winner and... Uh, Getting the accolades and that sort of thing, so it is. It is a tough one. It is a tough one. Where do you think your team need to improve? Um. Well, it's happened two years running. The I say Danny Johnson last year scored fifteen, then got withdrawn by Mansfield, and then we had Freddie Draper this season. Um, scored ten goals uh, before Christmas, and then gets. It was supposed to be a season-long loan, and then you pulled him away again. So, um, what we need to do for next season is have at least two strikers who are ready to play, and nobody's going to pull them away at half halfway through the season because that's such a disruption. Uh, things were going well with Freddie Draper. Actually, our best spell 
best spell has been since Freddie Draper went, <laughs> incidentally. But um, but it was a big loss, Freddie Draper. And uh, was it Songo who came to Walsall before he went to uh, back to Markham? How did he do for you, Songo? Um, I wasn't impressed, to be honest. I wasn't impressed. I think he's a decent player, but I think I don't think he was mobile enough for our midfield. He was Derek Adams' love child, and he follows him everywhere. <laughs> I think he does, doesn't he? Yeah. The um, the we're we're Bradford not sniffing around DJ in the summer. <laughs> we need a striker. The, the last thing we need. We'd we need... Want, the last thing we'd want is uh, having Danny Johnson playing for the opposition. To be honest. Um, will Malfall ever stop his second touch from becoming a tackle? <laughs> That's a bit uh, damning, isn't it? I don't like that. Um, we had Wright at Warsaw. I thought he showed a lot of promise. Was that um, ever, not what's his name? Which Wright was that? Tariq. Tariq Wright. Tyreek Wright. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. He did. Show, he showed a lot of promise for Warsaw. You liked him, you say? Yeah. He were... Under Mark Hughes, he did fantastic. And then end of the season, I think he got sent back uh, to Plymouth. Uh, not to Plymouth. Yeah. Uh, did he come from Villa? I think he came from Villa. And then Villa sent him to Plymouth on full time. Yeah, yeah, he was on. That's it. We had him from Villa. You've still got him then, Tyree Croyd? Yeah, he's, he came back uh, January transfer window. Oh, I think it was like yeah, a PR yeah. stunt, but he's, he's done okay. He's, what Bradford love is attacking players, and he's a good player when he's on his game. Yeah, I think he'll enjoy coming back to Warsaw. That'll be an interesting one. Um, I, th I don't think he likes defending, though, does he? No. We've got a couple of defenders like that who I think are personally going to go, like uh, Rydall's probably going to possibly go, and uh, hopefully Tyler, uh, Taylor goes as well in the goals. Oh, Ash Taylor, I think uh, I can't see him getting another League Two club, can you? No, he'll probably bugger off back to Scotland somewhere or even National League. Well, the thing is, I think because his missus has done very well for herself, so I think um, it's a wonder he needs the money, to be honest. I think if I was at that stage of my career and my legs have gone, I wouldn't, I'd be just happy to just hang up my boots and do some commentary somewhere and that sort of thing. Yeah. But uh, we see. So, um, ambitions for what? What's your prediction for this weekend? Well, we've been doing okay in the second half of games. Uh, first half, we've not been doing very well. I'm going to go three-one Bradford. And Andy three Cook's going to score a goal. Three-one Bradford. I'm sure Andy Cook's going to score at some point. Um, I think, as I probably would, I think Warsaw might. Uh, We'll get this one just to sort of take us to the last game of the season, still with a bit of hope that uh, we can make playoffs because that would be that would be amazing if we could. I don't think we'd get through the playoffs if we got there, to be honest, because uh, MK Dons are excellent. Um, but let's hope so. I'll go for 2 1, I think, because we've got to let Andy Cook get one when he comes back to Warsaw. That's only fair, isn't it? Yeah, he always scores against his former teams. Oh, I oh know. Tell me about it. We just hope we get uh, get enough to get us over the line. Uh, right then. Okay, we'll leave it there. I know you're going to talk to uh, my buddy soon. Um, for Warsaw, team news, the uh, Evans and Jackson. We've got Jackson Smith, young keeper, has been out for a few games, had a concussion. So, um, Owen Evans has been filling in. Didn't look a bit shaky, but he's done better in the last game. So hopefully he's sort of getting back to his best. Um, but other than that, I think it's going to be very similar. We've got Sturk, Ryan Sturk. He's a CDM. He came in for Brandon Comley. Brandon Comley got sent off against Notts County in uh, the most biased refereeing uh, game I've ever been to. Um, Sturk or Comley? That's a tough one. I think Comley will probably come back in, but Sturt did very well on Tuesday. Um, then be Hutch and Tierney, Gordon and Fowkes again on the wing backs, and Fall and Gordon to start with uh, Matt and DJ coming on to uh, 
terrorising the second half. That's uh, what we're hoping. Right then. Thanks very much. Good to see you, Johnny. Uh, are you coming down for the game? Yeah, I'm coming. I'm dri driving down Saturday, so hopefully and, we'll uh, go back to about three points. <laughs> You're helping. What I need you to do, and now this is very important, and I nearly forgot, Warsaw Outreach are going to be there on Saturday. Warsaw Outreach is a phenomenal project where they um, give food for the homeless, do meals for the homeless and for the elderly. Um, and we're going to have some donations going on around there. So there'll be buckets around the stadium and that sort of stuff. So uh, if you can help contribute and uh, raise some money for the homeless and uh, and the needy, that would be sort of a massive, massive benefit. So uh, everybody that's listening, bring some extra coins and uh, see whether we can uh, help Warsaw Outreach. Right you then. put it on a tweet. I'll, I'll retweet it for you. Okay, yeah, I meant to. I meant to do it. I was going to got a video. I was trying to put together, but I've sort of had problems with it. So, uh, I'll uh, I'll put that on my tweet, and if you can retweet that round and uh, get the guys to put their hand in the pocket for it. Um, yeah, one of um, I spoke to the, one of the guys from Warsaw Outreach, and um, he was saying when a whole family queues in the rain for a free meal, you know, the there's problems. So, um. So we, we want to do out what we can for that. So uh, excellent, Johnny. Thanks for coming on. Just got one more thing to say. Watch yeah, out yeah. for gin, the Ginger Cafu, Brad Ginger Halliday. Cafu. What's his name? Yeah. Brad Halliday. Alan Hay. Brad Halliday. Hall oh, Brad Halliday. I got you. Yeah. yeah. He's in team of the year for the AFL. He's a fantastic player. And I think his contract possibly ends at the end of the season. Uh, so I'm hoping he gets re renewed, but he's a dangerous yeah. player. He scored against Salford, and then he scored against Gillingham the other week. We need to watch him then. We need to keep an eye on him. Is he quick? Yeah, he's really quick. He's, he plays in the, I think it's right wing back position, I'll down, them, down the flanks. Oh, he'll have Liam Gordon to contend with. He'll, that'll, he'll keep him quiet. <laughs> Now it's looking looking like sizing up for a good game. Obviously, not so much on it for Bradford, but uh, it should still be a good uh, should be a good challenge, isn't it? Should be a good challenge. Yeah. Right then. Um, if Bradford win, I shall eat my hat, says Albert. I'll supply the knife and fork then. <laughs> well, uh, I was going to say, is it the sugar coated one? Um, Comley has to come back in for me, says the abandoned hunter. A uh, hundred percent great cause, yeah, for Warsaw outreach. Uh, so we able to get things going for that. Um, Halliday has been class, says the abandoned hunter. So, uh, yeah, he has been really good. He's a he's, he's our danger man. I'm nervous already. I wish you hadn't mentioned him. <laughs> All right, we'll win. There's not to worry about. You'll be going home in tears on, on Saturday night. Well, to be honest, we, at the start of the season, um, I said I'd be happy if we finish in the top half. If we finish top 10, I'll be really ch chuffed. And if we make top seven, I'll be over the moon. So uh, I'm quite pleased, really. But of course, as you know, with football fans, when you get close, it's like you feel like you've got to be there, haven't you? But, oh, it's uh, horrible. Everybody's pushing. Everybody's pushing. Great stuff. Right then, Johnny, thanks for coming on. Good one. Warsaw yep. Outreach. I'm glad I'm glad I remembered that in the end. <laughs> Cheers. It comes with age, I think. That's what it is. Thanks for watching. Cheers, everybody.